Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for taking the time to join us today as we celebrate Digital DNA Live 2020. Uh, my name is Hilary Morn, and I'm the program manager of the FinTech Corridor. The FinTech Corridor is a cross-border cluster with a driving force in developing, collaborating, facilitating, and promoting the region from Belfast to Dublin to start or expand in FinTech, and as a gateway for FinTech companies to Europe and abroad, whilst connecting EU and UK FinTech. The FinTech Corridor has an established membership of brand ambassadors, where you can connect and engage with, with a range of like-minded people in related industry. We have a keen focus on innovation and growth within finance and technology spaces, and continue to pioneer a vision for the region, together with the opportunity to streamline and drive engagement between the North and South of the island of Ireland. We see immense opportunity to engage with companies from startup to multinational and to ignite opportunities and collaborations across the island, which will ultimately benefit the region and its members. The FinTech Corridor has had many supporters over the past few months. In particular, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Intertrade Ireland for their key support to enable the corridor to develop an, a cross-border basis. Also, thank you to Loud County Council and State Street who have supported our recent launch and development of the programme. We are also fortunate enough to have Simon Bailey on our advisory board and would like to say a big thank you to Simon for providing us with an opportunity to participate at Digital DNA Live 2020. As the moderator of today's event, I feel very honoured to be in the company of such experts and look forward to the session on this rapidly growing sector. So without further ado, I will introduce the brand ambassadors and panel members. Our first guest speaker is Mike Brady. Mike's a senior sales manager at Fondi and has over 15 years experience in the payments industry and worked with PayPal prior to moving to Fondi. Mike works closely with his clients to ensure that they are, to ensure that they get the perfect customer experience. He advocates for his customers and makes sure their feedback is used to improve Fondi's payment gateway. Mike was significant to the launch of the Irish office. And when deciding to launch Fondi in Ireland, the aim was to bring an alternative to the market that was going to focus only on customers' wants and needs. The location choice was a strategic decision. By using the Mill Enterprise Hub in Louth as a base, it seemed the perfect location to be able to travel around the island whilst, while working closely with their clients. Mike also played a key role in the UK business and to change the approach previously used with clients, creating partnerships first and foremost. Mike's motto is, if our customers grow, then Fondy grows. A lot of truth in your motto, Mike. Uh, welcome to the panel. Thanks very much for having me. Delighted you're here. Um, so Mike, just uh, what service does Fondy provide and what's your role within the company? Okay, uh, great question to start with. Um, so basically, Fondi is a simplified global payments uh, company for small and medium-sized businesses looking for easy and affordable way of accepting online payments. Uh, basically, through simple API integration, merchants can access over 300 local and global payment methods. That includes the usual, like uh, credit and debit cards, but it also uh, goes into bank transfers, digital wallets, such as Apple Pay and Google Pay, because they're fastly becoming very popular now, and also access to over 150 different currencies worldwide. Moving on to me and what my role is within Fondi. I'm part of the commercial sales team and I'm senior sales manager here. I'm in charge of the Western European market and I lead and manage the all sales operations here. So basically as a senior sales manager, my objective is to grow incremental and new uh, sales opportunities for the business, but also uh, trying to reduce what we call churn or customer turnover which is people leaving um, to go elsewhere. So daily I work closely with our customer support teams, our marketing teams, uh, our technical teams, but most importantly, directly with clients to ensure that we give them the perfect customer experience and exactly what they're looking for. Thanks very much, Mike. That was a great overview of Fundy. Thank you. So in keeping with our theme, uh, payments and the view of the future, our next panelist is going from strength to strength. Just over a year ago, he was co-founder of a startup, and now PayHere supports over 1,000 users receiving payments from more than 100 countries worldwide. 
It is my pleasure to now introduce Pay Here's co-founder, Scott Wiley. Scott and his business partner, Pete Hawkins, ran a software agency for the last six years, developing MVPs for startups to uh, corporate organizers. They went full time with Pay Here in March of this year, and they have been growing month on month since. Uh, Scott, you're very welcome to the panel. Um, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about Pay Here and what part you play. Yes, certainly. Uh, firstly, thanks very much uh, for having me on the panel today, Hilary. Um, very happy to, to, to join with you to talk about the, the future fintech in Ireland. Um, yes, so Payhear was born out of a, a software agency, Alt Labs. Um, we've seen this after a gap in the market for a tool that non-technical people, um, so very basic um, level of technical ability, um, could set up online payments. Um, that could be for one-off payments, recurring payments, um, or donation-based payments. Um, so there is a lot of other tools out there that would need technical kind of help a developer um, may even take some time for a developer to, to integrate um, with these APIs um, so we kind of try and give a solution that that anybody could use it's, it's basically like setting up a, an online social media uh, profile uh, in order to get going um, with a wide range of customer base from agencies through to music tutors um, personal trainers and uh, even social media influencers um, we purposely design every Everything that we do at Pay here to be extremely user friendly um, and easy for the merchant and also the, the customer. Um, my role at Pay here, I'm a co founder um, and I would work very closely alongside uh, Pete to, to work on the strategy. Um, Pete would then look after the technical side of the business and I would look after marketing, sales, um, and then ongoing partnerships um, with potential customers. Thank you, Scott. Um, really interesting and diverse range of customer base at pay here. Um, so Mike and Scott, now that you have you on this panel, I'd like to pick your brains. So we'll get started and hear your views on the future of payments. Um, so Mike, if I can go to you first, pose this question. Um, we're now in the second wave of COVID and we're all operating in unknown waters. So looking at the next six to 12 months, what is Fondy working on and what will make merchants' lives even easier? Absolutely. Well, as you know, uh, as everybody knows, the last nine months have uh, brought challenging times to all industries, most particularly uh, bricks and mortar stores with lockdowns and restrictions have resulted in uh, changes to consumer behavior as well. Now, one of the direct results of the pandemic was a nose growth in online shopping and um, the e-commerce uh, marketplace which was growing uh, substantially prior uh, just exploded and is more popular than ever before. Um, we can definitely say that COVID-19 or, or coronavirus has, has sped up that shift in payments uh, greatly um, and many companies are now uh, scrambling to survive in a, in a new digital age. Um, I, mean, I suppose in my opinion uh, the current situation has forced financial services to, to see the importance of digitization and to try and adapt and a lot of companies have have suffered as a result of that uh, there, therefore payment platforms like Fondy which specialize in online payments need to respond um, to customer demand and, and and it's more important than ever to to listen to customers um, so I suppose in regards to your, your, your question directly, what are we working on that makes the merchant's life easier during a pandemic? Uh, well, the answer is really simple. We're, uh, and I suppose I'm going to sound like Joe Biden here, but it, it's something I strongly believe in. We are a company made from people for people. And that was what makes us different from the competitors in the market at, at this moment in time. Uh, we use direct tone of voice uh, to truly listen to our clients. Uh, we take on board their feedback to adapt our products and our services according to their wants and needs, not just what we want to push onto the market. Uh, we also follow industry trends as well, and we try and do it as quickly as possible. Um, I suppose, for instance, a couple of uh, weeks ago, we just launched a brand new checkout uh, page. Uh, but basically, it doesn't need too much deep involvement from our technical uh, teams here at Fondy, similar to what Scott's uh, trying to do at the moment. Um, what this has done is it's... Um, 
it's basically a simple interface that custom uh, that has a customizable design where customers can actually create a seamless shopping experience for their customers for their buyers and what it does is it's a hosted checkout page that can be adapted to match their own existing uh, website so customers don't actually uh, realize or or know that they have moved away from the, the customer's platform in order to check out on the checkout page uh, with Fondy. Um, also, some of the other things we've done is we've increased the number of languages that our support team speaks in order to make sure that everybody can actually have their problems solved. Um, we really feel strongly here at Fondy that it's better to communicate with customers in their own languages uh, so they, because they can express themselves more easily and uh, get their points across. Um, this also means that we don't lose the important bits of information within their messages. So uh, in translation and other things, and um, it removes the customer's anxiety from um, having to speak a not national language uh, in order to have their issues resolved. So we're quite strong on, uh, on, on trying to adapt to our customers' needs possible. Very good. And uh, Brady for president, I can see coming soon. Um, and how can Fondy support the SMEs, Mike? Uh, yeah, so so basically um, what, what we're trying to do um, is we, we, we're trying to um, be a company of people for people, as I've said before. I, I just laugh every time I hear that. Um, it, it's it's um, it's one of those things that, in the current, I suppose, um, situation with America, it just art American to me. Good slogan. <laughs> it is a good slogan. Uh, our goal is to help small and medium businesses scale across borders, um, which up until now has really been something for bigger companies. Our goal is to become loyal partners uh, with our merchants and to help them achieve success with our products and services. Um, we provide them with the necessary payment solutions to adapt to international uh, needs and accept international payments online uh, across the world in customers' own currencies in their preferred languages and with their preferred payment types. Um, and let's face it, uh, here in Ireland, we're, we're used to doing things with credit and debit card, but across Europe and Eastern Europe, there's a lot more uh, out there um, that customers would use. So in fact, with ourselves, merchants can access over 300 local and global, global payment methods and accept payments in over 150 currencies, as I mentioned before. So uh, I, I suppose that's talking about the, the world as a whole, but just, I suppose, bringing it back to our island and what we have done here. And we've managed to introduce a number of payment services over the last year that were either not available at all to the Irish uh, market or they were usually services that were expensive and only large companies uh, or large merchants could take advantage of. So for example, uh, we launched a um, what we call a moto service. Uh, some companies will refer to it as a virtual terminal. And this is a payment method that allows customers to place an order over um, with a merchant by with a card over the telephone or by email. Now, there are companies out there that have had that in the past. However, it, it never seemed to be available in Ireland. And it was just something that uh, for small and medium enterprises, we felt that it was something that was really needed. And we brought it in as soon as I came on board uh, with, with Fondy. Secondly, um, as I mentioned, we, we want to bring international payments closer to the Irish and, and UK communities. So we, we actually allow cross-border withdrawals to local bank accounts. Again, this is something that's normally featured for much bigger companies, uh, because usually when you receive dollars or sterling or euros or whatever currency isn't native to you, you have to transfer that to your local bank account in the local currency, which costs about 3% on average, um, which is a lot of money for small businesses. So we've actually allowed our customers to take dollars, to take euros, to take sterling, and withdraw them to the local bank account in those currencies so they can then trade with their international um, um, customers as well. So if they're buying stuff 
from other places, etc., they can actually use that currency. And last but not least, it's it's only a small one, but um, I find it's very important for small businesses. And uh, we have uh, started to use NFC technology, which is built into mobile phones and most people don't even know exists. Uh, but it's a technology where we have an app that turns your mobile phone into a credit card terminal. So if you're a small business and you have a pop-up shop or you're at a Sunday market or you're um, at a market in town or something, you can actually take credit cards really quickly and really conveniently just using your mobile phone, which is a game changer for small businesses. Excellent. They're all really, really interesting products that you're bringing to market. And uh, thanks, Mike. It's great to see Fondy have such a strong focus on SMEs. Yeah, um, definitely brilliant. something we, we, we want to uh, really uh, hammer home is we're here for the small businesses. Yeah. Scott, I'd like to bring you in here, actually. There's a big discussion uh, to be had around the changing landscape of payments, specifically related to online payments. Can you share your thoughts on this topic? Yes, certainly, Ulrich. Um, we've seen quite a few trends happen over the past six months, some related to COVID, some not. Um, obviously, we've seen the trend of a lot of businesses that maybe didn't in the past take online payments, try to move towards that. Um, and then even the people that are taking online payments, we've seen a bit of a shift in the way that they're charging their customers. Um, for example, uh, some accountants that we would have, that we would work with, um, who used to charge you know, a one-off fee each year and now breaking it down into monthly amounts. And that's something um, that we can facilitate with pay here. We can set up a payment plan that automatically recurs then um, every month. Um, uh, the benefit of that is when it comes to December to do the annual account, the, the accountants paid um, and there's no one-off fee for the actual business itself so it's actually better for both businesses cash flow so we've seen a lot of that happening um, and a lot of inquiries from more traditional um, set businesses of how they can get online uh, we and then at that stage can advise the best way to kind of set up their payment plans and, and how to get going whether it is a simple link that's sent via email or whether they use our one page website that, that you know displays uh, a couple of plans payment plans that they that they may have um also with the kind of the pressures in small businesses that everyone's facing at the moment um in terms of you know employees or um being able to to fund what's going on within the business and, and, and dropping sales um online payments and, and specifically you know subscriptions and recurring payments that we would basically that would be our kind of um go-to point um it's saving them time. Who wants to chase invoices anymore? Um, people can spend hours each week. You know, those hours could be spent in outreaching to new customers, building up um, a strategy for the business. Um, so it, it's wasted time and, and we very much kind of go in with the attitude of we can actually save your business time and allow you to focus. Because um, when it's the smaller business, it's, it's usually the, the owner of the business that's chasing these invoices. And, you know, that is not anything that is building their business. Um, so we try to try to help them with that. Um, also, we've seen a bit of a shift. Um, we would work with some consultants also. Um, perhaps a marketing consultant would be a good example um, who would maybe sell um, consultancy in Belfast for example um, we have one customer that is now selling their consultancy in San Francisco um, and they're able to through the kind of the better communication tools such as Zoom um, and um, whereby they're able to, to do chats so it doesn't matter if you're sitting here in Brisbane or you're sitting in San Francisco you're having the same conversation the kind of missing link for that individual was the payment piece on the end where we were able to come in um, and allow them to, to charge that customer, um, that retainer. So all of a sudden they've grown their customer base. They're not just selling in Northern Ireland, Ireland, UK, Europe. They're actually able to sell anywhere in the world. Um, and I think that's the kind of part two. Um, we definitely see a process of, of bringing the business online in terms of getting their payments set up. And then after they've kind of got used to that and they can see the advantages of it, we can then say, you know, if it's because it is services businesses that pay here would mainly deal with, we can say, right, okay, well, where else could you maybe look to um, to get more customers and, and try and learn from our current customer base and share the knowledge gained from them um, with potential customers and new signups that we get to pay here. That's great, Scott. Great, Scott. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, the pay here are providing such a service. And I think the pandemic has really created opportunities for smaller, smaller business to, is to expand 
you know, into previously unexplored areas. I think that's certainly a positive of the pandemic. Um, and I suppose as well, just staying on that, as we continue to see the, the rapid growth in payments, both on the island of Ireland, the UK and into Europe, we also see the market becoming very competitive. Um, and like, what do you guys find are the particular, the biggest challenges in this space? Um, Scott, I'll start with you, if that's okay. Yes, um, so from our perspective, um, we are, we're a startup. Um, we launched in February, 2019, um, and we're still very much a small business ourselves. And we are bootstrapped um, ourselves. So um, it is a very competitive market, especially with some of the, the bigger businesses that would have larger ad spend and, and uh, be able to, to put more capital behind different campaigns. Um, so the kind of, the bigger thing for us is, is getting out there and getting in front of traditional businesses. It is a harder route, um, but when you're knocking on the door of maybe an established business that's been there for 30 or 40 years, um, you, you kind of it is the first kind of conversation that they're having. They haven't maybe been reached. They're maybe not even online that much themselves. They might have a Facebook profile um, at most. Um, so our kind of the, the big thing that we are obviously do, always doing is the education, the fact that you know it, it is a safe way um, to conduct your business. It can save your business time. Um, and also kind of it is starting to be expected you know if, if you go into a, even a business nowadays and, and want to pay by card and they don't take cards there's starting to be a stigma of like well why not it's, it's quite an accepted uh, form of payment um, so definitely um, that would be our, our biggest kind of um, daily not struggle but it, it has to start with the education before they we can then bring the solution in um, so that's something that we're always trying to refine because different business owners will, will kind of react to different touch points they might see that we can see of time another person might say that this is just a necessity that we have to go to now um, and whatever way that we need to you know fit the solution around their business um, that's what we then try to to do um, with that business owner yeah, sure. Uh, Scott, I'm going to come back to you on the educational piece because I'm sure there were many or there still are many challenges involved in that. Um, so I'd like to ask Mike, um, you know, we see the opportunity to continue being innovative at the forefront of new and exciting developments in fintech. So what is Fondy focusing on and how do you see payments evolve? OK, so I suppose uh, where do I see payments evolving? Well, I, I suppose a simple answer is uh, we now live in a world where retailers, small uh, merchants and individuals are making international payments far more regularly. Um, that was never done in the past. So this has kind of resulted in a shift from high value bulk transactions, far more frequent lower value uh, payments being made on a daily basis. And at Fondi, we're, we're extremely proud um, of the ability to be able to support small and medium-sized businesses accepting online payments uh, globally. In fact, our tagline is, um, uh, and we, we, we're great with this, international platform, local payments. Uh, and that's really the, um, the guts of what we are, is, is taking small merchants internationally and helping them grow and thrive as a business. Um, to answer your second question, where is Fondy focusing? Well, the answer is we're always trying to improve our relationships with our customers and the audience uh, that we have by providing the best possible products and services as well as solutions according to their needs and again, uh, to their wants and to do so in the easiest and clearest form of communication that we possibly can. One of the biggest challenges in the finance industry today is communicating with clients. And we see this all too often with the big companies. Uh, you, when, when you're a merchant and you're dealing with the big companies, it, it, these are nameless, faceless companies and nobody knows who they're dealing with. Uh, and what we're trying to do is put a face behind the company. So when somebody comes on board with Fondy, they've got an account manager that they're always dealing with. It's face to face, over the phone, video chats, whatever you need in order to get uh, get, get your, your business uh, going the way you want. And um, from my point of view, it's been an amazing journey to see the evolution of this over the past year and um, working with the, the, the merchants that we've worked with. I'm really excited at, at how things are going to move forward, especially in the current climate. We all want COVID to end, 
Um, but ultimately speaking, um, the one good thing that's come out of COVID is it's really pushing companies to to really look after their merchants and and to be for be there for their merchants. I think that's something that um, you know we can all say uh, ha, has been a really good impact of of the current uh, pandemic. Thanks, Mike. I think it's great to hear Fondi's vision, you know, that it involves simple and clear communication. I think that's, you know, not only for payments, I think that, that would kind of go across every sector, but, um, you know, that should resonate well with your potential customers. Um, Scott, I, I'd like to ask you the same question, your views, please. Yeah, certainly. Um, so at Pay here, we're, we're always continually looking at, at new ways that we could simplify uh, the process of signing up of, of how people use our platform and, and how their customer actually reacts with the end product. Um, so I think for us, it's always looking at what the customer needs. So we would do a lot of research and kind of information gathering for customers and, and always listen to, you know, if 10 customers say that, you know, this is a feature that they may like, that's something that we can kind of dive into um, and, and, and hope then that this will be of benefit to, to other users. Um, I think using, um, making the experience better is always going to be top of the list for us um, where we're currently building another feature in pay here that we're going to be releasing at the start of December um, and that's basically what we have listened to our customers for the last couple of months asking us uh, to do um, and we did a bit of a uh, bit of a poll with our, our user base and they're like yeah this would be a great feature so we've listened to them and that's going to be rolled out in December and it's very much going to help again very very traditional businesses with no kind of technical help um, we do want to get to the stage where you know it is basically when you sign up to pay here now it's like creating a you know a social media profile into your name your logo your description um and really off you go it should be that simple um i do think it's a really fascinating space that we're in um the potential is absolutely massive um uh, even as, as mike's saying about the international payment side of things it's we're only getting started and if you look even in america that it's still probably about 80 percent of commerce is actually happening offline uh, the potential for everybody in this space is massive and you know there's there's different needs and wants from customers and there's plenty of companies around that can specifically um, help each one of them um, I think also for us it's really fascinating to see the kind of what banking uh, open banking can do in the future um, to take payments a step further um, you know to directly can communicate with your bank in order to transfer funds um, we do also you know help people with direct debits but it's kind of a longer approach Process, cards instantaneous and then open banking could be the next step um, and as a startup we're very much in the position that we can pivot pretty quickly so we're always keeping our eye open of you know what is the next um, evolution and uh, how can we jump onto this and, and maybe then have a solution to offer our customers at a really reasonable price um, because we are kind of working with the, the very level of people that they don't have the money um, especially now with everything that's going on to, to invest thousands uh, in a solution or, or something that might, might might not work we're very much like get going with us if you do well we'll then do well in terms of our transaction fees um so that's our, our kind of ethos yeah no it's great i think and i know it may sound like it's 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 very obvious that you know the focus is on listening to the customers and you know kind of addressing the gaps and strengths and weaknesses but it really is great to hear Pay here and Fondy have such you know a focus on that like it really is. Um, I also think Scott, the non tech individuals, could be a whole webinar we could do next. It'd be a huge amount of people trying to join that one. But no, it's great to hear that that's part of the creative process going forward. Um, to be honest, so I think we are. I'm I'm keeping an eye on time. I know we're kind of we are getting there. But um, so finally, I think we're all very familiar with big payment companies and presumably within your roles, this is an ongoing challenge. So any final words or thoughts for potential customers, um, you know, that are maybe with existing, the, bit, the big guys and are, you know, not sure about kind of going with um, smaller businesses or things like that. So Mike, I'll go to you please for your thoughts. Yeah, or words of wisdom. <laughs> I don't know about wisdom, um, but but definitely the one thing that um, that always amazes me about about companies is um, when they start up, 
there's so much potential and and so much hope and optimism by by merchants when they're setting up their new business um you know they're taking an awful lot of risk and, and an awful lot of um for an awful lot potentially awful lot of reward um and sometimes when they get established or they get set up they 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 kind of sit back and say well things are working so why change um and and likewise that the big companies are, are the exact same they they have innovative products and because those products work they kind of sit back on their laurels and they don't do much uh, else, um, you know, to bring new new services and products on and as uh, scott has said and as i've said uh, smaller companies are are pushing for those big business deals and and medium sized business deals, and they're always looking at ways of improving services for for their clients. Um, so I suppose when you you kind of are are established and and you're not really uh, pushing, you you kind of become stagnant yourself. And I think sometimes people have to look outside the safety net of what they're doing at the moment and say, okay, well, what can that new company do? What can uh, Fondy do for me that will help me increase online sales or help me increase checkout conversions? Or even what, what can Fondy do to save me money? And, and nine times out of 10, companies like Scott's and mine will have cheaper rates, will have products that the existing big boys don't have. And, and this isn't to, to bash any of the big guys because they, they've been doing a great job for many years. However, when I was working in the industry, there was always frustration by clients that they didn't get listened to and that they never got what they were really looking for. So small companies like Fondy and, and Scott's company can actually make those bridge those gaps in what you're looking for and yes we mightn't have the big name but we will certainly have the the, the big appetite to to do what you want and do it in a way that will save you money or will increase your customer uh, checkout or or will just give you a better all online service and um you know work with you as a partner not just as somebody who's um paying your 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 bills uh, and and that's something that I think um, small companies can uh, kind of do for you. So certainly look at your options um, and you, you'll probably find nine times out of 10 that you can get a better deal somewhere else. And you just have to take that initial risk that you took when you were setting up your business and, and have a little faith. Fantastic, Mike. I think, yeah, you, you know, the, the, the kind of the smaller players are on the same wavelength, aren't they? So you guys are going to have a lot in common. Yeah. Um, yeah absolutely yeah and uh, um, the, like like uh like scott was saying there's there's a lot of services that they offer that that, that fondy has similar and what, what they're bringing on board is similar as well so so there's definitely scope out there and there, there's there's definitely opportunity out there for all the, the 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 smaller vendors to provide the same level of service as the bigger vendors but better Um, Scott, I suppose tying back in with the educational piece you touched on earlier, I presume that is probably, uh, you know, to, um, to kind of will come into that question that I asked with the ongoing challenges. So your final words, please. Yeah, I think um, for us, the educational piece has got a little bit easier. Um, that's one thing that COVID has kind of brought about. Businesses have had to look at different ways to run their business. Um, it could be from a cost cutting side of things. You know, people can't be chasing them voices all, all day long. So, yeah, you know, there's solutions out there um, to, to be able to, to set up, you know, recurring payments um, and then the necessity to get online because the footfall isn't there. Um, and again, as we have seen, you know, people can sit in their, their bedroom and, and do consultancy all over the world and get paid so you know it, it, there's a total shift in the way that um, we have seen customers um, really basically how they accept payments but then also how um, they go after customers and where they can go after customers you know australia new zealand anywhere um, it has opened up um, the world for a lot of, of our uh, customers and the fact that we can do those sort of payments for them is, again is, is the last piece of the puzzle um, so that's what we'll just be keeping um, kind of um, trying to educate more businesses and um, in a couple of years it'll be very much this is the common place this is how it happens and then at that stage we'll be looking at further solutions um, uh, you know as Mike says um, 
smaller companies are the ones that are innovating. Um, they are getting there quicker, um, even in Northern Ireland and the Belfast ecosystem and down in Dogpatch in Dublin. You know, it's these companies that are leading the way um, for the big boys. There's been an about turn and hopefully that will continue um, with companies like Pay here and, and Fondly as well. Excellent. Thank you very much, Scott. And thank you, guys. You've both been very informative. And I have to say, as a non-payments expert, but that has a huge interest in, in the sector, it's been really, really great. Um, so unfortunately, we are kind of out of time. And um, as we draw to a close, I'd like to thank our brand ambassadors, Mike Brady and Scott Wiley, for joining me here today. Um, I'm certainly, as I said, I'm much more informed and excited about what to expect from Fondy and Pay here in the future. Um, Mike and Scott, I think, have presented some very interesting insights, and I'm sure they have sparked some potential collaborations. So um, from the FinTech corridor, if you'd like to connect with our members, the likes of Scott and, um, and Mike, um, just you know, to access our network, simply join us at the FinTech corridor. It's very easy. Just go on to www.thefintechcorridor.com forward slash become a member or connect with us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, we're also offering uh, free membership for a limited time. And importantly, you don't need to be from the region to connect with us. Our brand ambassador's door, virtual door is always open. So thanks again to Mike, Scott and Digital DNA for having us at this year's event. I'd like to wish Simon and the team every success with the rest of Live 2020. And from all of us at the FinTech Corridor, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks, Ellery. Thanks,